if you could go back and give your 40 year old self one piece of advice, you know, financially or professionally, what would it be? You know, when, when you're young and you're just starting your career, there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of things you'd like to do right off the bat, you know, especially when you think, you know, retirement's 40 years out. Well, you'd be surprised at how fast that time goes by. Um, so what I would say first and foremost is start saving a little, even if it's a little, because, you know, you've heard many people talk about the power of compound earnings. Well, it's true and it works. So don't miss out is what I would say. That'd be the first piece of advice. Um, the second piece of advice was the the plan, the retirement plan that we just talked about. And, and I, the one thing I would add about that is that, you know, think about it year on year as your life changes, your life circumstances change. Welcome to another conversation in our series with oil and gas retirees. Today, I'm joined by Ted Bauman, an engineer and a leader with a career that spanned over 40 years. I'm excited about today's chat for many reasons. Ted embraces a learning mindset, and he also emphasizes the importance of a plan. Ted also brings a new perspective to these interviews, as although he worked in oil and gas, Ted did not retire from show. So I'm really excited to hear that perspective from another company. Ted, it's a pleasure to be chatting with you today. Trevor, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. I, I like starting out just a little bit of chat about you know how we met. And this is a really interesting mm -hmm. way we met because you know unlike most of my previous guests that have all been Shell employees that I knew from my career at Shell, I actually met you through your son and mm -hmm. daughters in daycare in common, and he actually used to work for Shell. So it's just crazy how it's a small world, especially when it comes in the world of oil and gas. Yeah, ab absolutely. And oil and gas is an international business, and, and yet that seems big on the surface. It's actually a very small community. For sure. Awesome. With that, I'd love to dive into a few of the questions. First, I'd like to get to know you more. So can you tell us more about yourself and your profession in oil and gas? Sure, I'd, I'd love to. It's, uh, I'm By training, I'm a mechanical engineer, and I started out in, in projects and engineering early on in my career. And like many, at some point in my career, I reached an inflection point where I had a choice to continue on a technical trail or look to moving into management. And I chose the latter. So I went back to school and got an MBA, and then I moved into roles that involved strategy, planning, and performance. And then in the end, I brought it all together because I had uh, experience across operations, projects, and, and finance. And uh, I worked with some others to, to lead a uh, project. It was a global project. It was about upgrading and deploying an, a, uh, a new enterprise solution for um, operations, procurement, and finance. And we were able to successfully do that across 15 countries and 16 business units. Wow. And then when we last spoke, you mentioned a few of the, the transitions that you've had within companies and mergers and acquisitions. Can you also tell us about that portion of your career? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the one thing I would say right up front is the oil and gas industry offers incredible opportunities, You know, to, not just in terms of the unique projects you can work on, but the unique places you can go and the unique people you can meet. And that's just incredible. And every time you do so, it's a bit of a transition in and of itself. It's also an industry that's been undergoing a lot of change over the last 20 years. And I think most people are familiar with that. And I would say in, in my 40 year career, I went through four mergers and about a dozen uh, organizational transformations. So change was almost a constant uh, through the career that I was a part of. And I guess if, I, if there was a key learning for me, I would say it's that the change is inevitable. You, you know, things will be different. It'll be, it'll show up in different ways of working. It'll show up in a different corporate culture. It'll show up in different management styles. The most important thing is, is how you adapt to that change. And that's, I'm, I'm sure, you know, words if people have heard many, many times, adaptability is, is key. My advice coming out through all of this would be, is look for the opportunities that the change brings. I think you'll be surprised. There is an opportunity to be a, a part of that. In fact, take a leadership role in it to make sure that you are a part of the new future uh, rather than the, you know, the way that things were. One of the things I'll say is, is just be aware that you know, much of what made you a success in the past may not be exactly what's needed in the future. So be prepared to change yourself as well. 
Oh, that's great. I'd love to talk more about the, the change in the industry and cycles as a whole in a little bit. But before diving into that, I want to step back just a little bit. You talked about a key decision that you made within your career that I know many people that are watching this, you know, have or, you know, are in the process of making. And it's really shaping that career once you get to the maker point of technical versus management. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about that decision and what impacted your direction of going into the management track? Yeah, and, and it was, so the first thing I'll declare is I'm, I'm an engineer in my heart. I just, I love being an engineer. So it was not an easy decision to make. And, and if I had to be just brutally honest, it, it had a lot to do with the situation at the time and the change that the organization was undergoing. And so I was trying to look at where the world was going, where the new organization was going. And I realized that the opportunities for someone like me was more on the management side than on the technical side. And it was a hard decision to make, uh, but I made it and then I, I committed to it and, and kept on with it. But it was really just being honest with yourself about you know, what it's going to take to be successful either way uh, and what that future might hold, including the uncertainties that naturally occur along both paths. Great. Now, thanks for letting me go back ahead on that because I know that's a, a tough choice for many people and one that they're you know, in the midst of through every annual performance review and career chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Great. All right. Now, continuing back on the, the path before we're talking about the change. So with oil and gas, again, being very cyclical um, between mergers, acquisitions, high prices, low prices, how yeah. did you manage the ups and downs throughout your career? Yeah. And, and it's, it's one of those things just to recognize that it's all about how you add value to an organization. And I, I alluded to this in a comment earlier about as the change comes, you know, the new world may require new skills, new ways of working, adapting to a new culture. Well, that was actually, you know, I think still holds true no matter what the change is that comes at you. The one thing I, you know, I would encourage you is never, ever stop learning. Take the opportunity to learn about the new organization, learn about the culture, learn about the management style. Seek to learn for yourself in your career, whether it's technology or, or personal development. And I, I would just pause for a moment on that one because we sometimes think about training and, and development as really just being technical. But what I found in my career, especially in the latter part of the career, there was as much importance um, attributed to the soft skills as there was to the, to the hard skills. So take the opportunity to grow and learn things like, you know, relatedness, empathy, EQ, um, organizational dynamics, um, how to engage and change management. All those things that don't necessarily fit neatly into a spreadsheet, but are really important in creating success, especially as a leader in an organization. Oh, great. And then with those skills that, especially, you know, for you and I fellow engineers, where we realize they're more and more as important as we go, but definitely didn't learn that when we were doing dynamics and static as in everything else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are some of the places that you would recommend or that you found helpful for people to learn about more of the emotional side, the reliability side, and the yeah. soft skill side of the business? There are many examples out there. So just, you know, learning how to speak extemporaneously. There's in fact, many local organizations that will help you do that. You know, Toastmasters, I think, is, is a, a popular one. There are learning programs online today that I wish existed back in the day when I was young. Mm -hmm. But you have access to things. Uh, you know, Harvard has an education series. MIT has an education series. You can you can look there. And it's all free, by the way. They, they, they give away that knowledge and, and expertise. There are organizations... Um, that exist to bring mentors and mentees together. And while I would encourage everyone to find mentees within your organization, those people who you have a natural chemistry with or a natural rapport, and just take the opportunity to have an open and candid conversation about your skill sets from technical to, to leadership or whatever it might be, soft and hard skills, but also take the opportunity to learn from others outside your organization, again, the external uh, mentors who can give you a whole new perspective. And the one thing I would just reiterate is when you're going through change, new perspectives can be incredibly valuable. So it is worth you know, tapping into that external world. Um, it's one of the things many people told me who moved on from oil and gas. And the first thing they said is, well, you'd be surprised. There's a whole other world outside of oil and gas. And that's true. There is. And there's some great learnings out there. And then the last thing I would say is read. 
there's some tremendous books out there. Read it, digest it, you know, ad adopt what works for you, adapt your styles, and you'll find that you'll be able to, you know, smoothly sail through a lot of the change that comes your way. Oh, that's great. Thanks for adding that context and all those resources. It's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to transition to then moving towards retirement. So mm -hmm. 40 years in oil and gas is an amazing feat. Uh, how did you then decide to retire? Did you have a set criteria, either personally, professionally, or financially that you were looking for? Yeah, and, and, and I wish I had a nice, compact, you know, simple answer for you, Trevor. I don't. It wasn't an easy decision. But what I will say is there were many factors involved. And, and naturally, you alluded to one of them. There, there's a financial decision. You know, do you have the financial wherewithal? Are you properly prepared to retire? And so that's an important one. And you've, you know, basically what I would say is know your numbers and work with your, your certified financial planner to make sure that you can, you can achieve that. And the sooner you do that, the better off you're going to be. Uh, and I think everyone mostly knows that. So what I'll, I'll focus on is some of the, the less tangible uh, elements that went into that decision. And, and it was a lot of reflection. And so the, the first one for me was just a, you know, family. And so I had grandchildren come into the picture. Um, my wife retired. And so I began to look at that and say, well, there's some other things going on here that I would like to have the time and space to redirect my energy. So, so that was one that I, I think was really, uh, really important. Inside my career, uh, I was just coming to an inflection point where I was finishing that big project that I was the enterprise solution that I was talking about earlier. I was just bringing that to a conclusion. And so I was coming up very quickly on the next decision to say, well, what project do I go to next? And so a big decision was, do I do that? Or is this the time to actually say, now's the time to go? And it also involved many other things around, how do I want to leave the space that I occupied in my organization? And I wanted to make sure that I, I left things neat, tidy, closed out. I also wanted to make sure that I looked after my people uh, because many of them had gone above and beyond to... I deliver a very complex project. So I wanted to make sure I had the opportunity to close out loose ends, shut down those opportunities in a way that I felt good about you know, as a professional. So that was the, the second item. And the, the third is really a, I don't know how to describe it, but it was just one of those things that was just a, you know, a thought that was in my mind. And I, I came across it very late in my planning process. And I wish I had, a, I had discovered it earlier. But it was an article that said, uh, at to in today's world, when you're older than 58, and then they just picked that number for a reason, they said, you, you're burning the candle at both ends. So every day after 58, when you're, you're working, you've lost that day to retirement. But they also said work takes a toll on you. And so you end up shortening your life by a day. So you're no longer investing a day of your life. You're actually investing two days of your life. And so the big thing for me was, and I, that was a real aha moment. And I, I reflected on that and I said, given all the things that I want to focus on, my grandchildren, uh, you know, friends and family, and my bucket list of things I'd like to do, like travel and, you know, golf and things like that, then how do I rebalance things to get where I want? And then part of it was to say, how do I make, you know, how do I reach my number, as we talked about right off the start? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, leave myself enough time and energy, because don't forget, you know, we're all human and, you know, we're not all 20 years old for the rest of our life. You know, how do I find that right balance? So when I am retired, I have the financial wherewithal to do the things that I wanted to do. And I have the health, the good health to do it. And I actually am clear about what I want to do and the time and space to do it. So that's, you know, it sounds a bit more complicated than just meet your numbers. But those are the things that went through my mind when I made the decision to retire. I appreciate you sharing the article about burning the candle at both ends at Pope past 58, because that's something that, you know, I'm sure a lot of people aren't thinking about is, you know, the second half of retirement. And then of course, health and plays into that a lot. Yeah. A couple of previous yeah. guests talked about legacy, which is the same thing you're talking about with leaving the organization, leaving the people in a place that you're proud of and health yeah. to be able to then have a successful retirement. So I really appreciate you, you bringing up those points as well. Well, that's, it's really important to to feel comfortable in the way you exit when and, and how you exit. So I think that was really important. You know, if, if I had to make a, 
you know, offer some advice, what I would say is, is begin putting a retirement plan together, even if it's a, just a paragraph on, on a piece of paper, but begin to start thinking about, you know, what would a, a good retirement look like? And I did that. And what I found is I had a look at it 20 years ago, it would be a paragraph on a piece of paper. And if I looked at it now, it's about six pages long, but it really began to, and it was a discussion document with, uh, with my wife and actually with friends and family. Mm -hmm. And it allowed me to be, to, to really generate some clarity around what do I really want? And that made it much easier to say, okay, well then what am I intentional, intentionally going to do to get there? And then in the end, when the time came to make a decision, I had that as a touchstone to help me. And so I, I would just say, get started. Just it'll, it'll evolve and you'll be surprised at how it all kind of comes together and provides that clarity. It makes you intentional and it helps with the decision making. So just, you know, start that process. It would be my recommendation. Uh, Ted, that's great. And that ties perfectly right into our next question. So, you know, please feel free to expand or add on something as well. You know, as mentioned, many of the people watching this, they're, they're mid-career, so 30s, 40s, et cetera. If you could go back and give your 40-year-old self one piece mm -hmm. of advice, you know, financially or professionally, what would it be? Yeah, and, and certainly making that plan would be one piece of that advice, but a, a couple of others would come to mind. First is, you know, when, when you're young and you're just starting your career, there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of things you'd like to do right off the bat. Um, but you know, especially when you think, you know, retirement's 40 years out. Well, you'd be surprised at how fast that time goes by. Um, so what I would say first and foremost is start saving a little, even if it's a little, because, you know, you've heard many people talk about the power of compound earnings. Well, it's true and it works. So don't miss out is what I would say. That'd be the first piece of advice. Um, the second piece of advice was the, the plan, the retirement plan that we just talked about. And, and I, the one thing I would add about that is that, you know, think about it year on year as your life changes, your life circumstances change. Uh, it could be uh, new children coming into the, the picture. It could be aging parents who need some help. It could be an expanded network of friends and family, uh, it, whatever it might be. But one of the key things is, is to step back and rebalance your, your life priorities. And that has everything to do with, you know, not just money, but also your time and your life energy. And so, you know, you can dedicate it all to work, you can dedicate it all to family, or you can find the right balance for your situation year in and year out. And I would, you know, just recommend take the time every year with, you know, with the ones that you love just to sit down and explore what that right balance might look like. So that would be, uh, I guess, the, the second thing. And then the third thing is, is just, um, and this is really a, a personal reflection, is as you go through your career, look after yourself. Uh, and, and that, I don't mean just financially or physically, but also mentally as well. And the one thing I would say is, you know, you're a human being, you have one life, you don't get a do-over. So, you know, ask yourself some fundamental questions. And, and I did that. And for me, those questions were things like, is this meaningful work for me? Because that was part of my internal satisfaction. Am I working in an organization that, you know, gives me dignity and respect and that was important for me to feel right about what I'm doing. And then also, lastly, was, you know, do I have hope for the future? Is this a stepping stone to something bigger? Is it offering, Trevor, the word you said, you know, earlier on, is it offering the legacy that I would like to, me, is it offering me an opportunity to leave that legacy that, um, you know, we talked about earlier? And so just, you know, keep those things in mind. And, and I will tell you, at one point in my career, I asked those questions and the answer was no. And so... I changed and I was very intentional about that. And without having thought about that and having written it down and had the opportunity to talk about it, I would have just persevered through it and I would have consumed some life and some life energy that I would have regretted. So again, be true to yourself and, you know, and look after yourself would be uh, the big piece of advice. Oh, wow. Can you expand more on what, when answers were no come to that? What, what were some of the things that you used to change to really drive that? Because change is not easy. Yeah. Well, it was interesting because I was very excited about the new opportunity. But when I went in and I got involved, I realized it was not what I thought it was. Uh, I, I realized I was op operating in an organization that was really wasn't aligned with how, you know, I wanted to operate and I didn't feel. And as, you know, as I tried to, you know, adapt, 
I realized that my personal dignity and my personal self-respect was at risk and I did not want to do that. And so when I thought about, you know, well, what is the future from here? I realized there was no hope for the future. And so what I did is say, it's time for a change. So I reached out to my broad network of mentors, contacts, and I said, look, I, I need to make a change. This is not right for me. Even though you know, I'm young and I can persevere, I don't think it's healthy for me. And it's time for me to make a change. And so I, I literally went out and, and found myself another role. Uh, within the organization. Now, I'll be frank, it did not go over well. And it took a risk. But I because I had the, spent the time thinking about it, weighed the pros and cons, and I was willing to take that risk. And in the end, it turned out to be absolutely the right thing to do. I felt much, much better about where I ended up. Wow. And you talked a lot about perspective. When you frame and had that perspective of there is no future in this role, that's a powerful framing for making that change. Yeah. And, and again, it's it's the thing that, you know, you got to look after yourself. You have one life and you need to feel good about it as you, you know, kind of you know, sail off into the sunset, so to speak. And uh, I did not feel good about where I was and I needed to make a change. Oh, great, Ted. Appreciate you sharing the details behind that. No, you're welcome. And now as we talk through, you know, moving off into the sunset and what's next. So what are you most excited about going forward? Well, and it, it's one of those things. That, so I'll start off the answer. Um, in a bit of a different way, Trevor, I'll just say is what I feel really good about right now is how comfortable I am on my retirement journey. And a big part of that was having that retirement plan that we chatted about earlier, because it actually gave me that clarity. I've been intentional about what I want to do. I'm exactly where my plan said I want to be. And now I'm taking advantage of the opportunity and enjoying myself. And I'm doing the things that were really, really important to me. You know, including making time for my grandchildren, including some of the physical activities and the travel that I, that I wanted to do. Again, I can't say enough how important it is to have that plan and to be intentional, because then you'll get the outcome that you're looking for. So that was the the first thing. Now, of course, your plan has to be realistic. So, you know, but I'll, I'm sure everyone understands that. They won't know where to go to. I think, you know, for me, I, I believe I found the right balance between the financial piece of it. And the, you know, and the physical, you know, the physical health and my, um, and my life energy, where I really wanted to focus things. I found that right balance and I'm comfortable that I've, I've got that right now. And, and I, as I mentioned to you earlier, you know, throughout the years, I had to always test the balance and make some subtle shifts one way or the other. Uh, but because I got there, I, I, because I did that, I believe I've now got to a place where I am comfortable with where I am. And I don't think I would have got there had I not gone through all those steps over the years. Uh, it's, it's incredible how experience really builds who you are today. Well, Ted, I really appreciate you sharing that, sharing your wisdom, sharing your experiences. Uh, it's incredibly valuable and I'm very grateful for our time together today. Yeah, absolutely. Trevor. It's been enjoyable. And uh, like I said, I wish everyone who's embarking on this journey, the greatest of success. Um, and I think there's life has a lot of joy to hold. And uh, this is all a part of achieving that. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Great. Thanks, Ted.